something spooky? Is it a podcast? Is it ghoulish? It is! It is ghoulish! Welcome to Ghoulish! I am Max Booth, a host, and today on the program I am talking to Paul Tremblay, author of so many books. Well, like five, six books, I guess? Eight? I don't know. I didn't count them. He's written a lot of books. You know what? All of them are really good. You might know him from a head full of ghosts, or disappearance at Devil's Rock, a little cabin at the end of the world. His latest book is a Survival Song, a, a novel about a rabies disease that causes a, 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 a pandemic throughout the, the, the fucking planet. Ring any bells? Yeah, yeah. Pretty uh, odd time to be uh, releasing a book about a, a global pandemic. But Paul didn't know what was going to happen, I assume. I mean, I didn't ask him, but I mean, that would have been rude to ask him if he knew it would happen. We just have to assume he didn't know. But what Paul does know about is uh, his rabies. He knows quite a bit about rabies. So uh, I had him on the program, and I said, hey, Paul. What's the deal with rabies? And then he, he gave me some answers. So uh, that's what you're going to listen to in just a minute on this podcast of Ghoulish, which is, uh, by the way, uh, hosted by me, Max Booth, a host. Uh, some folks say, hey, Max, isn't it redundant if you say Max Booth, a host? And I would tell them, no, it's not redundant. It, how would they know I'm, I'm a host if I uh, don't say it when I introduce myself uh, every time? So once again, hello, I am Max Booth. <clears throat> a host, and this is Ghoulish, a podcast hosted by me, Max Booth, a host. What else do I have to say before we get into the episode? Oh, yes. Uh, don't get rabies. Just don't do it. If you think you might want to, uh, think again, because it's, it's bad news. You're going to find that out in just a second. I run a small publishing company called Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing. And yes, that is a long name. Thank you for asking. Uh, the website is Perpetual Publishing. And if you go to that website, you will see we have a new book available for pre order now. And that is a novella called Stand Alone by Paul Michael Anderson. Ah, see, I, I am, I'm talking to a Paul Tremblay and I'm promoting a Paul Michael Anderson. It's a, it's a Paul-centric episode. Uh, Stand Alone is a novella about uh, the multivilles. It's a, a science fiction slashel type of book. I like to describe it as a, a Cabin in the Woods meets uh, Monsters, Inc. meets uh, John Wick. So if that sounds like something you might want to read, go on over to perpetualpublishing.com. You will see the book on the homepage, Stand Alone by Paul Michael Andelson. The, uh, the first 350 pre ordered copies we get, uh, folks will receive not only a signed book plate by uh, Paul Michael Andelson, they will also receive a unique uh, slashel themed deck of trading cards that we created specifically filled the pre olds on this book. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, there's six of them in, e in each deck. So I think you guys would dig that if you go into uh, slashel books. Uh, yeah, that's enough promotion in this intro. Uh, obviously, rate and, rate and uh, review us on iTunes if you like stuff like that. Uh, we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash pmmpublishing. Uh, one final word of advice, uh, don't get rabies. Wait, did I say that already? Well, I, I have to repeat it because uh, it's the silliest thing. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> don't get rabies, man. Don't get it. You will regret it. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I uh, I uh, just woke up a few minutes ago, so I'm gonna be on you. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be all over the place, and I think it might okay. be, I think it might be good. Uh, do you have any questions before we begin? Uh, I don't think so. So you usually don't interview the the host of a podcast. You usually <laughs> like to be asked the questions. Gotcha. Yeah, I guess so. Crap. Okay, this is gonna. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, but okay, we can we can roll with that. All right. Uh, so the podcast is going now. I'm just gonna Google what is rabies because I uh, didn't do my research. On... Okay, so you recently wrote a book about rabies, Paul, because you 
listened to an audiobook about rabies and you thought, ah, I got to do that. Am I, am I correct? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it, when I read it, it wasn't sort of like, ah, Eureka, but you know, I just happened to listen to it while I was walking my dog, which I thought was sort of a nice way to listen to a book about rabies. Um, yeah, I just, that sort of just got filed away. I was like, oh, maybe I can use that someday. And it was probably at least a year, maybe even two that passed um, before I had the idea for Survivor Song. It was like, oh, rabies, yeah, I can use that in this book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the interesting thing about rabies is you could get bit by a, an animal with rabies and not know you have rabies full up to a few yields, so it's almost like you let this uh, disease uh, settle through your body before uh, embracing it. Oh yeah, it's a crazy disease. Uh, you know, it doesn't. Um, you know, it's there's no like blood test. It's not found in the bloodstream. Like wherever it enters, it, it instantly attaches to your nerves or your nervous system, and then it slowly crawls up your nerves. You know, like one centimeter a day, I think is what I saw. Um, uh, still, you, go. you don't. I, I knew it. <laughs> The math teach will bring in math. <laughs> yeah, although it's the metric system. Is that real? I don't know. I uh, th This does brings, bring me to a good question unrelated to rabies, but I do have many math questions for you, oh, no. if that's okay. okay. So <laughs> sure. uh, sometimes I've noticed in the, in the U.S. we spell it as math, but in the U.K. they, they add an S on to that. So uh, what's, what's going on with that, Paul? I'm not sure. And I'm endlessly actually fascinated by that. And I often, in my discussions with my British friends, uh, sort of playfully throw the word maths out there. It's weird to say, you know, just say it maths. It just doesn't sound right. It seems right. <laughs> but it's, it's, it sounds right coming out of um, British people, though. So, yeah, I don't know. I've had a long discussion with a mutual friend, uh, Michael David Wilson, about the spelling of this uh, world. <laughs> and I, I promised him I would get to the end of it with, uh, when I had you on as a guest. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I think for most people, like when you say math or in the US, if you say maths, you can almost picture like that extra S is if you imagine math as a, a villain with a, a handlebar <laughs> mustache. When you say maths, you get the extra twist of the mustache. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the math in the UK has a facial heel. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the only math question I have at the moment, but uh, be prepared. They will be coming for you. Now, All right. <laughs> rabies. What was the book you read? Let's plug this book. Uh, it's called Rabid. Um, you know, then it has a big, long subtitle. And shoot, I wish I could remember the big, long subtitle. Subtitle. That's terrible. I'm not, in, I'm not in my bookish area right now. I've been banned to my bedroom because my lease is working and the kids are doing other stuff. I'm also um, podcasting in the bedroom so that we have something in common. <laughs> I believe it was published in like 2013. Um, I mean, it was a big nonfiction book. I mean, I think it's the only book that has the title, just rabid, um, you know, basically like a history of, of rabies and humanity. I hope it's um, one of those titles that kind of, uh, all begin with the same level, like rabid rabies round. <laughs> that would be terrible. Never mind. Yeah. There's no, uh, what is that? Alliteration? There's no alliteration in the title, as far as I remember. Wow. You know, math and English, Paul. I am <laughs> so impressed. I try. I, uh, this is way off topic, and you don't have to answer this if if it's uh, it makes you uncomfortable. But I know you teach math. I have uh -huh. this funny fantasy in my head that like maybe you have a like a like a rival English teacher who always wanted to write something, and the fucking math teacher got a book published, but I can't. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I definitely, I, I definitely had one. He's no longer at the school that I teach at. He's no um, longer alive. No, he's alive. <laughs> yes. No, there, not, no, no ill fate befell him. <laughs> Certainly not for my hands. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. It is weird. I mean, uh, I guess it would be sort of weird, you know, especially if you're an English teacher who's, you know, writing to have the math teacher <laughs> doing what I'm doing. Um, but I don't know. I'm sure like in, in some people's, uh, point of view. Oh, it's, you know, it's, it's horror, it's genre. It's not serious. It's not serious writing or serious fiction, which I do think is the attitude of some of the administration at my school. Oh, no. maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not being, um, maybe I'm, I'm being too cynical because they, they have been quite generous with giving me the ability to like, you know, even leave school a couple times a year to go to like a festival and stuff like that. 
That's nice of them. And plus, I assume they let you teach that whole uh, uh, semester on rabies, despite uh, being a math <laughs> class. That was the thing. You kind of threw the book out on them. Yeah, the first day is bat handling. You know, it's a nice warm up. Um, I don't tell them which bats are rabid. I said, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You'll be, you'll be presently surprised when you figure out which one is rabid or not. Uh, and the course moves on from there. It's an interesting class. I uh, was not involved, but I did read the news uh, articles about it and the uh, the actual math that happened. I rest in peace, everybody who was involved. So the, th <laughs> so the thing about rabies that I was reading, and I assume you ha you know way more about rabies than I do. I have done uh, only a little bit of research. Maybe. I consider you a rabies expert, Paul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that like even with an animal, you don't really know if they if you ha if they have it until you dissect the brain. Yeah, it's just the, the, because there's no, they haven't come up with any sort of test, you know, based on where the virus is, you know, goes. Like I said, it just attaches right to the, to the nerve. So there's no blood test you can do and right for animals. The only test that, that I know of is, um, yeah, when, you know, after they're dead, you, you cut open their brain and you can see, oh yeah, that, that puppy named Ralph was rab was rapid. Um, you know, which <laughs> is, just, you know, which is horrifying. You can't name the dog um, that you killed. <laughs> I thought it made it extra horrifying. <laughs> who, who, are there any people with dogs named Ralph out there? I, I hope so. I love human names on dogs. I think those are the best. Those are the funniest. I desperately want to get a dog named Bob because that amuses me to no end. Yeah, I agree. I, I would love a dog named Bob. Oh, now I'm thinking of my mutual friend Bob <laughs> Pastorella. If only he was with us today. That sounds like he's dead. He's just not on the podcast. Right, he's just, yeah, he, he's right. alive as, as long as I know. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Bob. Uh, so I was also reading about rabies. Like, you will most likely to get infected by a bat because they spread it the easiest. But, like, all types of animals usually have it, right? Like, uh, foxes have it. Skunks have it. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty much a mammalian disease. Um, I, so I don't, th I don't think birds can get it. Goldfish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lizards. But yeah, mammals so, and, and bats in the U.S. Um, are the largest vector for infecting people. Like part of the part of the issue is that you know if a bat bites you, especially if like you were sleeping or something, you wouldn't know because their teeth are so small. You're not going to find like a gaping wound from a bat. Like their needle teeth won't leave anything, and then no. I, I actually, I for my newsletter today, I just happened to punch up like the CDC article, and they I think they mentioned seven out of ten cases in the U.S. are or are due to bats. So my, my friendly advice for everybody is, you know, if you wake up and there's a, a bat flying around your room, you can't mess around. You gotta go get rabies shots, man. Like the reality <laughs> of what Batman would actually be like is just depressing. That guy is dead in real life. Right. Right. Unless, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't a radioactive bat. That's, that's Spider-Man. Well, not that Spider-Man was a radioactive bat, radioactive spider. Um, well, maybe it's just a really slow moving rabies that's in Batman. Actually, that'd be a really cool take on the take on Batman, right? Yeah, he's saving lives, and like two years later, he just goes. Aah! But yeah, he starts. <laughs> now he's starting to deteriorate. Yeah, he's starting to deteriorate. And oh man, someone's gonna write that. He begins yelling like lullabies for some reason. <laughs> right. <laughs> See, Paul, I read the book. You read the book. Yeah. Yeah, that's proof. <laughs> you you uh, thought I didn't, but I did. Uh, but I I don't think it was a radioactive bat, but I do think no. it was a radioactive uh, Robin that bit Robin. Uh, that makes sense. Now I don't know a lot about Batman, and I know this is off topic, but it, did that? Did he kidnap that boy? What was the deal with that? Is Robin the, Rob in a, an abduction case? <laughs> I have to confess, even though I've consumed quite a bit of Batman movies, and some of like I guess the the most famous comics. I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on why Batman shows bats. Oh man. Sorry. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know either. That's why I was asking the, uh, the rabies expert. What's with the foam that comes out of the mouth? What is that? You, uh, you mentioned there might be toothpaste in an email, but that doesn't seem right. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I mean, so it, when you are infected with rabies, when the virus passes through the brain barrier, once it passes through the brain barrier, there is no cure. Um, it, it, that's how, that's how the virus perpetuates itself. It is shed through saliva. It is not, 
you know, again, it's not shed through the blood. That's basically the virus having taken over your brain and saying, all right, produce, produce rabies virus. We're going to do it through saliva because it'll be extra scary and messy. If I'm allowed, if I'm allowed to project, uh, the mental sort of reasoning of, of the rabies virus. So I was also reading like, there's no way to stop it once the infection is, uh, like if, once the symptoms take effect and you also have that in the book you wrote as well, like once the symptoms right. come on, you'll fucked. I was also reading that those like the only like treatment they seem to do now is, well, maybe they tried it and it, they decided, oh, this is crazy. We shouldn't do this. <laughs> it's like, because the, the virus does not, uh, destroy the brain, but it does like scramble the way it operates. Sometimes right. they will induce someone like into a coma so they can pump you full of uh, medicine. Yeah, I mean, so that's cover. Uh, some of those cases are covered, you know, very well in the rabid book that we were talking about. It not that the book itself is rabid, but the book titled rabid. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, but you know the problem is, you know they they've only been successful like having people who are you know, actually infected with rabies, you know, there's not a lot of cases where they've successfully put somebody in a coma and they've recovered. And even like some of the cases, you know, I'm going off memory of, of this book from a while ago, but even uh, for the people who recovered, I mean, they're just not the same. They've got some pretty extensive uh, brain injuries um, that they have to deal with. So you're much better off just getting the rabies shots before you, uh, you know, before you get, before you show any symptoms, you know, and the rabies shots aren't, like big needles in the stomach anymore. It's all the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good shot not... to the eyeball. Yeah. 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 You don't really feel it except for the excruciating pain part. But you but do see it. You do see it. Yeah. You, get, you know, isn't that cool? You get to see it happening. <laughs> the thing about getting uh, stabbed in the eyeball with a needle is once it goes inside the eyeball, you then get a chance to see inside of your eyeball and you don't get that chance often. Um, uh, yeah, I was gonna say I get to do that all the time, but I guess I really don't. Well, not all of us um, teach math, Paul. <laughs> Speaking of math, true. I have a question about math. Uh, how come, what's okay. up What's up with this, okay? So sometimes you have nemmills, right? But then sometimes you have a Y and an X. What's, what's going on with that? How can you just change a class from math to English? We ran out of numbers, so we, uh, you know, we need the numbers. Well, the numbers just represent other numbers. It's actually almost it's like English. I mean, it's symbolism. The Y is symbolizing, you know, what's going on in this linear equation. Or maybe it's a parabola. Who knows? What is the loneliest number? <laughs> what is the loneliest number? Uh, well, the song says it's one. I mean, and songs are rarely wrong. Um, maybe it's not lonely. But, maybe it's just an introvert. Yeah, but I think it's maybe it's 13, you know, besides, was it tryptodectophobia? Is that the, the name for the fear of 13? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, a lot of people are afraid of 13, so maybe that's the loneliest number. What or, or if it's like a totally random number, like 3,702. It's no me. one likes that. No one likes that one. <laughs> no one talks about me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Speaking of songs, I think uh, we could be pretty good friends, Paul. I think we have good the same taste in music. Because the right. title of this book, I Am Almost Sultan, is taken from a <laughs> AJJ song. Is that correct? Oh, good. Um, yeah, definitely. I was toying with... Uh asking them for permission for, you know, to quote a line from the epigraph, but yeah, uh, I thought it would have been too much, but also then I was playing, Oh, maybe the next book I might ask them. So I don't know. They seem but pretty yeah. down. I think they would say, yeah. So their song is survival song. Yeah. Right? Or yeah. 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 So it's yeah. a little bit different, right? <laughs> it's different enough not to get sued. Exactly. <laughs> um, I actually have, uh, Oh, why am I spacing on the dude's name? This is terrible. Please don't listen. It's uh, Sean, Sean Bonnet, right? Is the the lead singer? I think songwriter I know his name is Sean. AJJ. Yeah, yeah. Um, now he, um, we got in touch with each other a few years ago. He, had, you know, I think because I was tweeting about a band that he's friends with, and you know, he'd mentioned, "Oh, I love the Headful of Ghosts." I'm like, "Hey, I love your music." And you know, we actually I met him before a show a couple of years ago in Boston. That was really cool. Speaking of that novel, wasn't that also a bad religion title? A head full of ghosts. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, well the, the bad religion song is called my head is my head is right. full of ghosts. Right. We have um, to tweak was, it a bit. Right. 
Yeah, well, I the the working title of the book that I turned into my agent was "My Head Is Full of Ghosts." <laughs> it was actually it, it, uh, "Bad Religions." My head is full of ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we left off the bad, part, but uh, no, he wanted a, a slight title change, which I think was probably right for the for the better. But I did get, you know, I was able to quote a lyric um, in the epigraph with the band's permission too, which was which was amazing. Nice. It's almost like uh, with the shining and the shinning, you don't want to get sued. <laughs> You do not want to get sued. Certainly not. I mean, does groundskeeper Willie ever give bad advice? I don't think so. No. I mean, I would always trust anyone who lives in a shack behind a school. Wait a minute. You look at a school. Do you have one of these guys, one of these groundskeeper Willies that you talk to for advice? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I, I, uh, the, the person in charge of like the physical plant at our school is a very nice gentleman. But uh, he does he doesn't nearly yell as much as, as groundskeeper Willie, uh, but he but he does keep to himself. He doesn't want to you know he doesn't want to be dishing out life advice. That's you know that takes too much of his day if you if you were to do that otherwise. Could you give me some life advice? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I have any great life advice. Um, I, I gave away my best one is if you wake up and there's a bat in your room, you got to go get rabies shots in your eyes. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like that should be like put on like placemats, welcome mats, like some of those pa- you know pieces of art that you can buy like at at a really cheap you know dollar store or something where it's in script. If you wake up and there's a bat in your bedroom, go get rabies shots. You know, instead of saying like "love this home," it's, it's that. <laughs> Love this home. It's that. The, it's, <laughs> It's that that you hang up on the wall. Okay, I uh, I'm gonna tell you a bat story I have. Uh, I uh, I I look at a hotel, and uh, one time I was at a uh, a meeting with uh, the staff and my GM, and we were sitting in the room, and then uh, the person who was doing front desk that day came running in and said, "Help! We need help!" And we discovered a bat was inside a room. And it was basically above the bed, and on top of the bed was a man and a woman, completely naked, hiding behind a blanket, too afraid to get out of bed because the bat was just looking at them. Oh, wow. So my GM, she went in with one of those big nets you get leaves out of <laughs> swimming pools with, and she yep. she swung it at the bat and missed and hit the man in the stomach. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the bat, but that's all. But yeah, that's the thing that and- happened. And for uh, I was gonna make a really bad joke, but why not? Why not go there? Do like, it. Uh, so the hotel clearly charged them extra because because he, he got hit. Yeah, that was like that's that's what he was looking for. <laughs> naked, <laughs> naked under the blankets. He wanted someone from the hotel to come in and strike him. Yeah, with he, the pool skimmer. We do charge <laughs> an extra shame rate, and he did he didn't <laughs> buy that. <laughs> I, I think that's wise advice too. You should you should have. You should have that on the menu of of options at a hotel. An extra shame rate. I'm gonna begin bringing that up when I check someone in. Like, <laughs> if, like an extra fifteen bucks, we can shame you. <laughs> would you Would you take that rate? Um, that sounds very fair to me. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, uh, it is cash only, no receipt. Yeah, yeah, um, no, you know, you can't, and no returns, obviously. Yeah, you cannot return the shame. Like there's no evil. Yeah. No no shame <laughs> refunds. Although maybe. I would like to be I would like to be a refunded shame. I don't know what that means, but I like the idea of it. Yeah. So since the uh, pandemic has been going on and most people haven't been outside, hopefully, I have noticed like when I step outside my hotel at night, I'm seeing a lot of uh, wildlife. Like I'm seeing just coyotes walking across the parking lot. They all getting brave, but also I'm noticing a lot of bats above my hotel, and it's starting to seem like a like a Dracula castle. <laughs> Have you noticed anything like this lately? Uh, no bats. I know there are coyotes in our area, but I've definitely seen an influx of. Well, I've seen a fox a few times. We have a fox I think that lives near our house because he. You know, it was used our yard a few times for just like a run through. Um, beautiful looking and amazingly quick too. Um, but the biggest thing is, is, I feel like there's been an explosion of rabbits um, just everywhere. If I, you know, if I take my dog for a walk early in the morning, so I do live in a neighborhood that's not very congested. So, you know, if I'm up before most people, I, I feel okay taking the dog for the walk and there's rabbits everywhere and they don't care. <laughs> They're doing their rabbit thing. I love walking my dog and 
my dogs will go nuts if they see a rabbit, and the rabbit notes this. Uh, so I, I discovered, like, the defense mechanism they have is just to become a statue, and you don't even right. realize there's a rabbit unless you you just happen to glance at it by mistake, because they will so statue like they're not even blinking and i could just imagine like what's going on inside that rabbit's head it has to be freaking out it has to be like oh fuck oh fuck there's a dog oh god oh god oh god oh god i think that's a good mental representation of what's going on with the rabbit unlike my mental representation of, the, of what the virus thinks about but maybe the rabbit's thinking just sitting there like totally relaxed like ah oh, you know i forgot to forgot to watch the kids or <laughs> I, I didn't fill in the coffee pot uh, off today. Oh, I forgot. I, I left the rabbit iron on. And <laughs> I then he sprints off back home. I don't think that's a thing. No, probably not. Uh, stick with but, math, but they're, Paul. But they're not wrinkly, though. That's true. They, they could use like a hot, just like a warm rock, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I've never <laughs> seen a I've never seen a rabbit uh, rolling against a rock, but that doesn't mean anything. I haven't seen lots of things, and they and they exist. Yeah. I'm told. Have you had any experience with rabies? No, none, thankfully. Any um, uh, bat stories? <clears throat> uh, most of the times we've had bat encounters. It was outside, happily. Um, uh, although, actually, I take that back. Uh, the Not the house that we live in now, but uh, the first house that uh, Lisa and I bought. We had a ton of bats living within the, the frame of the house. It was an old house. And, and, they, and they got in. Um, and the, you know, for the winter, that was essentially where they were hibernating. And the, the creepiest part was, it, it sounded like it sounded like animals were bowling behind our bedroom walls. Like it was just like <laughs> this rumble. And you know, later that spring, when we hired someone, you know, not to kill the bats, um, but to build like a one-way bat door so they would leave our house but not be able to get back in. Um, they said, "Oh yeah, in the winter, they they curl up into these giant balls for heat and just like." And it sort of rolls around because they're most of them are always sort of fighting or struggling to get like to the warmest spot. So <laughs> we literally, literally were listening to a ball of rats. I mean, a ball of bats um, rolling around the, the frame of our house. That is the cutest thing I've been told today. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Wow. Ball of bats. That's hard to say. Ball of bats. I'm not even going to attempt to say that. <laughs> I think the, the the scariest thing I discovered while uh, reading about rabies today, well, last night, I guess, is the fact that if you get bit, I mean, the symptoms could take place anywhere from, like, a few weeks or months to several years down the line, and you just don't know. That's, I don't know, I don't, people don't talk about rabies enough. This is a thing that is serious, and no one talks about it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think... Part of it is it is so eminently curable as long as you get your shot within those couple weeks, or I should say round of shots. So like the first shot, the, the role of the, I forget the name of it. I knew the name of it when I was writing Survivor Song, but the role of the first shot is to sort of like detach the virus from, basically kick it off your nerve, and then the vaccine comes in next and allows the you know allows the immune system to sort of take over from there. Um, but man, the the story the story of how. Um, Pasteur, it was the wee Pasteur, I hope, <laughs> you know, found the rabies vaccine, like without the benefit of even knowing what a virus was or any, you know, or any sort of way of seeing the virus, just, you know, working through what he believed in the science part of it. Um, it was, honestly, it was inspiring and also just maddening because like all this, you know, genius sacrifice and work done, you know, for a vaccine. So like, you know, how they discovered the rabies vaccine was just so incredibly amazing, you know, story. Um, and, he, you know, even then, obviously, at the very beginning, you know, you know, people in the mainstream press like, oh, you know, this isn't going to work. And until he showed them that it did work. But now to have just like now to have people, you know, anti-vaxxers just, you know, blithely throwing away the greatest human invention ever just makes me nuts. It's maddening. What is like yeah. the too long didn't read version of how this uh, vaccine was discovered? Like, do you uh, have the memory of it up front? I know it's been a while, so if you don't, it's fine. Uh, so, I mean, he had done some other prior vaccine work with, it might have been anthrax first, or maybe you know pasteurization, um, as well. But basically, what they had to do is they, you know, they kept, you know, they had to. <laughs> In fact, like a bunch of rabbits with rabies and just sort of, 
work it out, like what, what could possibly work. And they ended up, you know, through trial and error, like creating essentially a rabies virus that was super virulent so that it would infect them quickly. Um, but I mean, it just seemed to me like they were almost working, like, you know, working without being able to see the virus at all, or even knowing, you know, what this was. I mean, they knew what this rabies thing was, but without like a definition of, Hey, this is a virus. It's a, you know, it's essentially a group of proteins, you know, that, that weirdly acts on its own. Um, but now definitely a very compelling story. I mean, so obviously it didn't, the, some of the memory of it doesn't stick with me because I didn't talk about that, talk about that in my own book, but, um, no, that, that whole book in particular, Rabbit, is definitely a very interesting read. I will definitely link to it in the show notes. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, you said it was like, what, a year, maybe two, after you read the book that you began looking at the novel. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. How much of that research, like, did you just know? Or did you have to revisit the book again? Did you have copious notes about rabies in particular? I know, like, pandemic stuff you'll still helped with, but on the topic yeah. of rabies... Yeah. So I, the first time I read the book, I listened to it as an audio book. So when I knew I was going to actually use rabies for, for my novel, I, I bought a hard copy of the book and, you know, and, and took notes and a lot of the stuff, but there was also a lot of information to be had that I would reference online as well about rabies, you know, particularly in the United States and how, how it, it, it gets passed, uh, et cetera. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I bought, I bought that book twice. So, wow. <laughs> How uh, how kind of you? I guess so. I, I mean, I put good. I made good use of it. So, I mean, you're practically a hero at this point. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take that. Now, sure. listeners should know I wasn't even going to bring that bring it up that he bought it twice, but uh, in a deleted section of the podcast, he was like, "You should ask me about that." <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, the next question I have, uh, I'm, you might want me to cut. I don't, I don't know if this is spoiling too much, but I wanted to ask you about the aftermath of the book because I know, at least at one point, I don't know if it's beyond the halfway point or before that. You mentioned that you know the country does survive and we do right. get, we do make it. So I was going to ask you about like, what do you think the anti-vaccine movement would be like in this particular case? Oh, I think unfortunately it would be sort of unchanged. I mean, I think you're seeing it now. Like, I mean, one of my worries if, for the coronavirus is, you know, hopefully, if and when we we have a, you know, a, a vaccine that you know works, that it's still going to linger in our country because what well, well, I think I saw a number recently at some poll that was like seventy percent would get the would get the vaccine. <laughs> what's with the other thirty percent? I mean, what's what's what stopping we, you? What what are we doing? Um, yeah, you know, I don't know. The longer this goes on, hopefully, you know, that number changes, but uh, just given how, how ingrained, um, how ingrained, uh, like the misinformation and conspiracy theories about vaccine becomes like, I don't know, like so many of those people are just zealots for, for, for their anti-vax cause. So I don't know how you change their minds. It's, cr it's, um, it's crazy how many still think yeah. this is all a hoax. Like at my hotel, I get it constantly because of the things yeah. we have to do. And like in the lobby, like breakfast and coffee is now behind the front desk and I have to set it up and I have to give everybody coffee instead of them doing it. And I, at least once a day, I encounter someone who's like, why are you doing this? This is all made up. I'm like, what, no, it's not. What, what's wrong with you? Uh. Anyway, Can I, yeah. so is your is your hotel operating at full capacity or like by choice is it half capacity or something like that? So uh, if we could sell out, we would, but we haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my right. hotel hasn't done anything to limit occupation. Sadly, I wish they would, but they haven't. Uh, but we've been uh, in the beginning. We were like at five, ten percent for a few months, and now we're back to fifty, sixty percent pretty much every night. And it's it's a decent sized hotel. It's a hundred and 17 rooms so i mean oh. you, you teach math you can figure out <laughs> that. Yeah. and yeah it's not been great uh we have the mask policy now only within the last two weeks has uh texas like made it mandatory really so right. before that it was just a suggestion <laughs> and still i mean i'm getting people who give me so much shit 
trying to enforce the mask thing. Uh, uh, like a week ago, I this guy came down to get coffee. I was like, do you have a mask? He said, no. I said, well, I can give you a mask if you want. We have some at the front desk. He wouldn't do it. And I was like, well, I can't give you coffee or breakfast until you put one on. And he responded by thrusting his middle finger at me and just yelling, fuck you. And I was like, why? why? Uh, I don't know. This uh, is a... Uh, a comedy podcast. I'm glad we were ending this way. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but that's that, like tragic comedy. It is. It's. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, the response that I, I I've uh, I'm almost at the end of my rope with this job, and my response was this: yell uh, "fuck you" twice at him, and then it. Then he responded by "well, fuck you again." And then I yelled, <laughs> fuck you a fourth time. And then he just looked at me oddly and ran out of the hotel. But I was desperately hoping we would continue this stupid comedy routine of just yelling at each other. But it didn't happen. Uh, well, um, you won. You clearly won, though. That's I did. Like, right? So I guess yeah. it's the, was it the third one? Uh, That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. I they just they just give up after so long and <laughs> and something else I discovered is I I can just say things to guests now if they're crazy and nothing happens nothing happened from that I waited and then nothing happened hmm. yeah maybe you should have a cage of rabid bats with okay. you as well so you, and that you could like let loose on on the mask interlopers I, I would be all for that I would help <laughs> I would help pay and provide for for that service for you okay listen Olds, did you heal that <laughs> we can't he's, he can't go back on what he just said he's gonna buy me a bunch of bats <laughs> rabid bats rabid bats which we won't know if they all rabid until after they die so uh he has put me in a type of pillow now <laughs> which i think well, is kind of math related yeah well i mean you you already discussed how you know now how to find rabies in animals so yeah <clears throat> you think i have rabies uh, I'd say it's unlikely. Okay, that's good. To I won't know. say one hundred percent that you don't, but unlikely. Whatever percentage that you want to put on that, that's less math. That's more like when they say, "Oh, it's more of an art than numbers." I think that's more of an art <clears throat> determining your your probability of of rabies. On the next book I write, can I put unlikely to have rabies on the front cover? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And you thought the Stephen King blurb you had was great. This is way better than that. Man. <laughs> Unlikely to have rabies. Stephen King never doubted, never said anything about rabies with you. You could have rabies as far as he's concerned. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. How can folks find you online? Uh, so I'm on Twitter at Paul G. Tremblay. Uh, my, my website is paultremblay.net. If you go there, you can sign up for my free newsletter. Hopefully the newsletter is not annoying. It's really going to be like a once a month thing where I'll entertain you with the humorous stylings that I've entertained you with during this podcast. Um, and maybe talk a little bit about just what's going on in my rabbit, rabbit, my rabies free book world for the most part. Great. Now before we end, well, also thank you for doing this. This has been fun. This has been a great way to wake up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I know you. We all know you teach math at this point. I've said it many times in a strange way. Mm -hmm. I uh, I have to know. Do you often have like a some type of a chalk build outside the room in the hallway with like an impossible math question? And if so, what is that? Uh, I do not. Although sometimes, like at later. At at a point about halfway through the year, especially for the younger students, like the geometry students who are typically freshmen, uh, I do have a couple of sort of math riddles slash puzzles that I give them that are, are, are very difficult to solve. Do you have any that you could say quickly for the audience to solve and maybe they could win yeah. like a bat? <laughs> well, one now is like this big long number that's really annoying looking and you have to figure <laughs> out the pattern. Yeah. So that one really wouldn't work out. Um, and the other one is is more of like a riddle, but you have to solve it using sort of like math logic. Um, yeah. I mean, I could say it would take a couple of minutes. I mean, I'd be happy to if you'd like. Only if you I don't want know if it's to. That irritating. Only if you want to. If it's not annoying, go ahead. If not, we can end it now. <laughs> All right. I guess sure. Really quickly. Uh, so there's a queen in charge of uh, you know some fictional some fictional land, 
and she has three daughters and she wants to, you know, instead of just giving, you know, having the next queen be the, be the one who's the oldest, she wants the next queen to be the one who's the wisest. So she devises this uh, sort of riddle slash game. She tells her three daughter, three daughters that you're going to be put into a room with no mirrors, no reflective surfaces. There's no cheating like that. And you're going to have either a white or a blue mark put on your forehead. And you can't see what your mark is. So it's white or blue. Um, the only rule is if you look out and see two of your sisters with blue marks in your forehead, you have to laugh. Um, so the queen, being very wise, instructs that her three daughters each have a white mark placed on their foreheads. So they're put in this room. The three daughters are, you know, looking at each other, you know, for a good two or three minutes. No one's laughing. No one's figured out who's, um, you know, who's, who's what color until the smartest daughter figures out that she has a white mark. And I, and the real is how does she know that she has the white mark? Ah. Um, and it's, it's a fairly involved <laughs> answer. I, uh, you lost me when you said queen. I, uh, I live in the United States, Paul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> true that. Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, if anyone can solve that and I don't know, I guess tag us on social media and if you get it, I'll, uh, I'll send you a copy of Paul's book. I'll buy a copy and send it to you. How about that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, All right. thanks for doing this, Paul. That was, uh, Way more math than I ever talked about in a long time. I know. I probably shouldn't have done the, the riddle, but... I'm glad anyway. you did. I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, thank you, Max. That was just a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to a new episode of Ghoulish with me, Max Booth, a host, and also Paul Tremblay, uh, a guest. If you can solve Paul's impossible math question he gave at the end of the episode, go ahead and uh, send it to us. Uh, the podcast's Twiddle account is Ghoulish Pod. My own Twiddle account is Give Me Your Teeth. And Paul Tremblay's Twiddle account is Paul G. Tremblay. Uh, tag all three of us. Maybe also give us a follow and then say, Hey, I, I know the question. I know the answer to that impossible math question. I hold on that good, great podcast, Ghoulish. And uh, this is the answer. I, uh, I don't know the answer. He did not tell me. And I, uh, as I told him up front, I don't do math. Uh, shit, I'm running out of time. Perpetualpublishing.com! <laughs>